Joe Biden has been declared president-elect by the media. But as we said before, last time I checked, there's nothing in the Constitution that says that CNN decide the winner. Donald Trump continues to make his case for widespread voter fraud, and this latest development may yet just prove him right. We don't know for sure if there is widespread voter fraud. We don't know that if there is, it will make a difference to the result. What we do know is that it's deserving of an investigation and will continue to support any efforts towards transparency and making sure that all elections are fair and honest. This is political still on our election 2020 series, and I feel like we're going to be for some time. Um, and just before we jump into today's video, uh, as we always say, if you do enjoy our content, then please consider giving us a subscribe, give us a like, give us a comment down below. As I say, we always reply to all comments. We've had some amazing comments, uh, you know, people really taking the time to come and put forward their opinion, and that's amazing. And uh, we, we love to have discussions down there. So uh, let's jump into it. Connor. Ab absolutely. So we're heading over to Breitbart for the article today. Breitbart, probably the closest thing to a mainstream uh, right-wing news outlet now after Fox has betrayed us all. Um, so we have here um, Georgia's top election official, is dispatching a team of investigators after a ballot issue was discovered in one of the counties most responsible for giving former Vice President Joe Biden the lead over President Trump. While Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger did not reveal the nature of the issue with the ballots, he did announce late Saturday that investigators were headed to State Farm Arena in Fulton County to secure the vote and protect all legal votes. Fulton County has discovered an issue involving reporting from their work on Friday. Officials at State Farm Arena to rescan their work on Friday, Raffensperger said. The Secretary of State has a monitor on site, has sent additional investigators, and dispatched a Deputy Secretary of State as well to oversee the process to make sure to thoroughly secure the vote and protect all legal votes. Observers from both political parties are there as well. Incredible that you have to go and secure a vote. <laughs> Let that sink in. They had to send people there to secure the vote. Yeah. Diane, there has been a bit of ex, uh, a bit of um, digging on this, hasn't there? Yeah. So um, we have this tweet from from Cal Becker. He is a producer writer at Fox News, and he has been relentlessly tweeting about all and everything that he can find out from his sources about what's happening in these states where they're still doing counts or where there is sort of suspicions about some of the counts in certain counties in Georgia. And he was saying this about the same time that these uh, officials have scrambled down to Fulton. There are apparently 132,000 change of address red flags in Fulton County. These votes are highly likely ineligible to vote and have moved. So I don't know how much this affects the vote. We still don't know uh, if it will, if they, you know, did these people did vote or whatever. I don't know. Um, it could just be that it's just one hundred thirty-two thousand people on the um, were on the register that have moved and they weren't removed from the register, um, but and they didn't vote or whatever. I don't know. But as he says, in Georgia, only ten thousand votes separate the two candidates. Um, and when we're talking about that. Um, potential path that Trump could have if he managed to flip some of these calls by having votes thrown out that were illegitimate, he would need Georgia along with Arizona, North Carolina and Pennsylvania. That's the most clear, obvious route or instead of Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and then that would be a draw and it would go to the state legislate, uh, state legislators. But in Georgia, there's only seven and a half, ten and a half thousand votes that separate them. And in Fulton County, the one that um, that's in question here, where there seems to be all, all these sort of bizarre stuff going on, um, that is the biggest county. And they had, you know, over 500,000 votes just in that one county. It's a county that Joe Biden won very convincingly 73% to 26%. If you compare that to 2016, it was only 68 to 27. So he has uh, improved quite significantly there, over 5% more of the vote. 
just in that county than Hillary Clinton got. And we've seen in Georgia as well, just, um, you know, tens of thousands of people just turning up to vote for Joe Biden and then leaving the rest of the ballot blank. So it is, there are some, some anomalies there, whether it's voter fraud or not, is still to be uh, proven. But certainly there are some anom anomalies there. And, you know, Georgia is, is basically, we talked about on election day, the hurdles that Trump needs to overcome to win well, it feels like we're still kind of like on hurdle two now. <laughs> After he won Florida, <laughs> he still needs to win Georgia. Um, you know, and here we are like a week after the election and we're talking about, oh, can, can Trump still win Georgia? So this will be, you know, he has to win this state and then he can maybe start focusing his attention on the others and seeing if there there is there has been some uh, illegitimate votes going on in those ones. Yeah, I mean... It's, doesn't it just seem to be a bit too perfect to be an accident? Because in every single one of these states, you know, we've had problems in Pennsylvania, problems in Michigan, Arizona, Nevada, uh, and obviously Georgia. Okay. And each of these states has 20,000 swing. Um, and, you know, it just, they just seem to get, oh, just get over the line. And just by the minimum effort required, like you say in Georgia, with these uh, votes where they voted for Biden and left the, left the rest of the ballot blank. Mm. Uh, but apparently 100,000 people did this. Utterly insane. Um, all these things need to be investigated. The media have already declared a victory. It's ridiculous. I mean, there needs to be some legitimacy established for Trump supporters to be able to accept the election defeat, but it's not there. I mean, if you're listening to us and you are a Trump supporter, tell us in the comments, like, do you feel like Biden has legitimately won this? Do you think he's won it at all? Yeah entire establishment seems to be moving on and not considering you and not considering your opinion. They're just moving on and uh, declaring victory. And now the entire world basically believes that it's been settled, but there's still outstanding legal cases and there's still a hell of a lot of votes that need to be checked. There still needs to be a lot of legitimacy established. Just seems to be an utter farce at this point. And I know you're, you you want to be a bit more neutral on this, Ian, and you want to like kind of wait for the the reports to come out. But for me, I don't know. I'm having trouble. I'm ha really having trouble in trusting anything, trusting the system at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't have absolute hundred percent faith in the system, and I think you mentioned there just a number of, um, like you said, the number of uh, hundreds of thousands of people that voted for Biden. Um, and then left the rest of the ballot blank. There was 500,000 cases of that in this election. Last election, there was 125,000 cases of it. So apparently, you know, nearly 400,000 more people decided they're going to do that this election than last time. Um, so to me, those are anom anomalies. Um, I think the thing is, though, um, if you start to push this idea that there has been loads of fraud, before you can like really 100% truly prove it. And then it turns out maybe you are wrong. And I don't know, I don't know whether, whether it has been or not. I, I look at the situation, I see lots of voting anomalies and I think they, they have to be investigated. I, I think this election, and we said this leading up to the election so many times, that there is just so much motive for Democrats or Democrat supporters, Biden, I mean, not even necessarily Biden supporters, but just Trump haters, there's so much motive for them to go far and beyond what normal people would do for their candidate. Uh, mm. Because, you know, the media has been telling them that he didn't even win legitimately four years ago, that Russia stole the election away from Hillary yeah. Clinton, and that Trump is this racist and sexist. And, you know, he coming up to the election every time that we would get into a discussion with someone um like on reddit when we post the videos on reddit or in the youtube comments um you know it would just be like oh you're supporting your scumbags you're supporting um you know with this guy who wants to bring about this um you know like nazi regime or whatever and uh, <laughs> there's going to be a police state and all this kind of thing you know just because he supports law and order and obviously it was you know these people there's a lot of people that genuinely think that way there's a lot of people that genuinely think that way so the stakes in their mind have never been higher so i just i would not put it past this election of all elections there being some serious um voting irregularities and, and potential fraud but we have to see the evidence first because if we're wrong and we're talking about this, then there could be, you know, millions and millions of people who think that the election was stolen from Trump 
in the same way you had all of these crazy people who were going on about, you know, Russia any moment now, the big smoking gun about Russia is going to come out. And I just don't want to see a repeat of that situation for the next four years. I, I really hope we just kind of like have a definitive answer, uh, but we shouldn't yeah. jump to any conclusions before the evidence comes out is all I say. Yeah, of course. And I mean, like, have you have you seen these soy boys on the internet? And they're kind of like, I mean, you know, where else would you find them? These uh, soy boys. But so basically what they're saying is like, they're comparing the celebrations that they've been to uh, for Biden's victory to like kind of the end of Return of the Jedi, uh, where they're all <laughs> celebrating the fall of the empire, right? It, it's the elected president of the United States, but whatever. So, you know, when you have that mentality, when you are comparing in your head Trump to literally the empire from Star Wars, who blew up a planet once, um, these people, they do consider Trump to be literally worse than Hitler. And I'm not saying that in kind of uh, a pejorative way. I'm not saying that in a, in, in a straw man way. You can actually go and ask them themselves, who do you think was worse? Adolf Hitler killed millions and millions of people or Donald Trump? And he'll say, well, Donald Trump. So if you were in Nazi Germany in the 1930s, do you, would you like to think you opposed Hitler in some way? Would you like to think uh, that you um, uh, did something to, or you joined the resistance or something? Of course, you, you, you'd think that way, wouldn't you? So from their perspective, this is their moment, their call to action. And so all you need is one person going into the ballot as a, a volunteer election worker. You need one person who's, I don't know, a delivery driver carrying those votes. You need one person who's perhaps a, a low-level uh, official in the Justice Department who might change a briefing or something like that or might slightly change a number. But you have many, many... It doesn't have to go back to Joe Biden because what he's done is he's polarised all these people through the rhetoric and through these... They, they never accepted the 2016 election, did they? They polarised all these people and now all they need to do is wait and see and rely on those people to take it onto themselves to act. Exactly as you say. Yeah, and it could just be that it's not, you know, a case of um, some grand conspiracy. Um, like you say, if you, when you, or like we just said, when you have all of these uh, people who have the motive and, and like they're comparing it to, you know, Nazi Germany and they're celebrating it like it's uh, Star Wars, uh, The Last Jedi, or, or I, I don't return I, of the Jedi. Return I, of the Jedi. Star Wars, sorry, right. I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was asking for you to um, correct me on that. Um, you know, when they're comparing it to these things, it, you know, they are living in this sort of bizarro world where reality is totally different from the one they perceive in their mind. Like you say, this is the great cause that they've sort of come together to to oust this, um, <laughs> you know, dictator from power or whatever. Um, you know, Donald Trump, the Sith Lord, and. But it could just be that it's not some, you know, widespread conspiracy. It's lots of individual actors maybe thinking that they're the only ones that are doing this. You know, like you say, the postal worker or the um, the poll examiner or poll challenger or the poll counter or whatever, the vote counter, that person. Um, it could just be they're all doing this, not realizing that there are loads of other people doing this. And then it all adds up. Um, and it's all happening, it seems anyway, in all of these democratic strongholds where it doesn't seem like there, has, there is as much oversight. Obviously, what's happened in Pennsylvania is an absolute disgrace that they've not been able to go in and observe. They've not been able to go in uh, without binoculars and actually see what's happening and what votes are being counted and which ones aren't being counted. And the actual process that gives us faith in the elections has not happened because they've not been allowed to sit there or stand there and, and watch the votes and go, mm, oh, hold on, that one looks a bit dodgy. And the damage is done now in many in many regards, because many of the envelopes that you know were or won't postmarked before the election have already been thrown away. So uh, and, and I'm just I'm just I'm just totally scared that, you know, at this point, you know, uh, the the establishment has moved on. It's it's played its hand perfectly. And now all those legal concerns they don't mean anything anymore. I mean, Al Gore got almost 40 days, got almost 40 days after the election, and Donald Trump gets, what, a week? Mm. You know, for, for me, I'm beyond reasonable doubt that something fishy is going on here, but um, I think for Trump fans, we're going to have to admit, you know, things aren't looking good for us, and, you know, the establishment's a giant machine, and that machine's lurching forward without us. So, mm. again, you know, let us know in the comments. 
do you think that Biden's the victory is legitimate? Has that been created in your mind? Have you been put beyond reasonable doubt that your candidate lost? I'm interested to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know in the comments. And of course, Trump has i believe started the process or will start the process for a bunch of litigation today and a bunch of lawsuits that he's putting forward in states so um i think really there's two stories at the minute right now there's the there's the potential for election fraud and there is the way that the democrats are already uh, fighting with each other before barely before i mean before they've even started their terms so um both of these things we're going to be covering and doing more videos on in the future so if you enjoy our insight, our analysis, um, then uh, please do consider subbing. And we look forward to uh, having a chat with you down in the comments in further videos. So thanks for watching.